Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, today's project is going to be a uh, sort of a gantry type uh, hoist where I can spread it out wider in case I need to go, go straddle over a pickup truck and then move it back into a regular six foot wide piece. Uh, I guess if I really needed to I could squeeze it in tighter than that but I don't see a need for doing that and it's also going to be a height adjustable give me two uh, different heights that I can lift it upwards just in case I need a little more room now I went out and measured everything in the garage and, and I figured seven foot was as tall as I could get it and I had had this steel cut square tubing cut to seven foot length before I picked it up and then I got to thinking well wait a minute there's going to be a three uh, inch piece on the bottom and there's going to be some wheels under that and so I went out and got to measuring everything up and there was going to be another three inches on the top so I wound up having to cut nine inches off of both those seven uh, seven footers <laughs> you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men so let's just go ahead and uh, and get started on constructing this thing and see how we come out I you can count my mistakes while I'm doing them all right. All right. The evolution saw is sitting in the middle of the floor because I'm cutting things, and some of the things I'm cutting are those two one feet pieces. They were on a four foot section. I'm going to put wheels on those pieces. So right now, I'm going to set the mill up so that I can start drilling holes in these guys for the and, and thread them for the wheels. We'll get, go ahead and get that done. It's an easy thing. The holes are laid out precisely where they need to be. And so I'll just drill them. Move them up there on the next one and drill them. And we'll see how everything comes out. Okay, I'll change two of this and we'll power tap the little boogers. Okay, I think, yep, camera's on. Alright. A little lubricant on the tap. And let's pull it down the same way. Four straight holes with good threads and just right. I actually uh, got this size tubing because it would fit my wheels. All we need is just a very bare minimum of a bolt to go in there. Now these are imperial bolts, but an 11 millimeter socket fits just right. Those bolts are short enough to just barely qualify as bolts, huh? Alright, they all tighten down and hold and the wheels on there. 
I'm going to have to do this three more times, the drilling, the threading, and I'm not going to leave the wheel on there because this thing will wind up getting painted. There's no use painting the wheel, right? So, you guys take an apple, I do three more wheels worth of holes. Alright, there we are. Four holes in the end of those two. Four holes in the end of those two. That's ready to be painted. Have wheels put on it? No. There's going to be some welding yet. Well, once you've got <clears throat> everything uh, stacked up there to the assembled height, it looks like uh, more like nine inches than anything. So I'll have to take those long pieces and cut nine inches off the end of them. So even though I had it pre-cut before I got here, it made it easier to haul, but I still got to cut one more time again. I guess that's why you buy saws. It's been a matter of a bunch of months since I made my air dryer. This is the desiccant out of the main chamber. There was just a little bit of blue stuff, I guess, stuck right on top of the, the lid at the bottom. You see the rest of it's pretty well pink. Now, I couldn't see through the side of it, so what I was using is this guy right here. He is uh, hes my measure of uh, whether it's time to change or not. And he was still mostly blue down to about here. Let's pour him into there. So you see that probably I was still getting mostly dry air, but it's time to change the desiccant. I'll, when I edit the video, I'll look and see how just exactly how long I went <laughs> before I had to change it. But. I'm interrupting this build to dry this stuff out because I want good dry air for my plasma cutter. I already had a jar of dry desk sitting here so I used that to refill my indicator part and uh, we'll go see how the airflow works. Alright so the airflow it comes from the compressor up this hose in here down the tube out the tube up through here around this hose and into this other uh, little desk container here so that's why this guy is my gauge to tell when I'm getting wet desiccant because I can see through here the side of him and I can see when he changes colors so that's uh, <laughs> been working pretty good so far so there's two pieces that I got to cut nine inches off of I already cut the first one and that is the second one once I get through with that, I have to drill a hole in one end of both of them. And then I think it'll be time for the welding. I'm not looking forward to the welding or the grease cleaning. These things are greasy from end to end. I used one of the chamfering tools Chuck sent me, the, the ones that were dull, that I sharpened up on the uh, YouTube grinder and made a nice little chamfer. Alright, so there, this is the way this thing's laid out. There's two holes, one here and one here, whereas this piece right here can be slid inside. And at the normal width, this hole will be lined up with this hole and be pinned into it. But if I need greater width, there's a nice 15 inches of room there to slide this guy further down. That's one of the adjustments. Now the other, the other adjustment is this guy uh, right here is going to be welded onto here. You know, not in a sloppy mess like that, but straight on. This hole is lined up with here, but I've looked at it, and if if I need this to be shorter, I can shove it down. That'll make it six inches shorter. If I need it to be taller, what well, all I have to do is just slide it up and put a pin through here. And that pin will go across here. It doesn't have to hold on to anything. And I've gained, uh, what, another, another three inches. And I could put a hole here and maybe gain another six inches. That's something I'll have to decide before I start welding this stuff together. But, uh, I'm kind of convinced maybe that's what I ought to do is put another hole 
so that I can have even that much more adjustment in height. Who knows? Like Tom Lipton said, nothing built too strong ever broke. Uh, nothing uh, made with adjustable height, you know, is likely to be too short. <laughs> Who knows about the too short? All right, that piece hanging from the, the wire there. I already painted him because he's not uh, he's not going to be welded to anything. And then the welding is going to start with those two pieces right there. I'll get them done. And get, uh, <laughs> there will be another piece just like it that faces the other way. I'll get it done and set them aside and they'll be the next painted once I get them welded. And then these are the two long uprights. They'll get welded to those big square pieces there. Then they'll be painted and wheels put on. You can almost smell the, the finish from here. I see a tiny, tiny little light at the end of the tunnel. Well, I got the welding done today. That's one upright piece, two top pieces, another upright piece there. And so tomorrow, I'll work on the old saying, angle grinder and paint make me the welder I ain't. I'll dress it all up good tomorrow and I'll paint it. And who knows, it might be done by Wednesday. But we're seeing a little brighter light at the end of the tunnel. This took me all day. The welding wire got stuck in the tip and I didn't know how to get it out so I didn't realize I could unscrew the tip so I took the whole handle apart and lost the little axle out of the on off trigger so I had to make a little axle for the trigger and all kind of junk and then I finally realized I could unscrew the tip and I finally got it all unstuck and back to welding but that was an hour of fun <laughs>